Very I find Lamets extremely inspiring. Caroline Polacek is not who you think she is. Yes, today she might be an indie darling, but did you know she has been single-handedly been putting out innovative work since 2008? It is 2024, spanning more than four projects and quite literally hundreds of songs. We have got to take a moment and give her work some flowers. Hi, I'm Kate. I'm an artist and musician, and this is my series called Cattle Considerations, where I talk about art, culture, and the internet. And wow, <laughs> the extended, extended edition of Desire I Want to Turn Into You just came out. And I mean, it was already in my top tops of last year but I cannot help but gush again over the ever asking edition spring is coming with a strawberry in the mouth in the mouth in its mouth what an experience you can't help but feel grabbed by her music and that is what makes it so powerful my picks from the traditional album probably pretty impossible I also really like that in one interview she was talking about the Da -da 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 part and just saying how she hopes that other artists will sample and remix it and put it into their songs in a way that really feels like championing championing I can't say that word championing <laughs> championing the spirit of creativity rather than obsessing over the copyright not that artists are not entitled to fair compensation <laughs> I have a lot of videos on that. My favorite artists are the ones that so clearly view it as a collective practice. Billions was also a fave. The Choir, love it, love it, love it. Visuals, hello. Smoke, visuals, hello. I could go on and on about this album, but the truth is that there is so much more to what led Caroline Polacek to get to this absolute momentous beautiful gorgeous piece of work i personally discovered her um through bruises by chairlift which um got its big push out there by being featured in an apple commercial i think it was originally in my pandora feed i used to listen to pandora radio um, and discover a lot of music that way before um, Spotify took over the market. And so I think a lot of people know about Chairlift and credit to this user who made this playlist because I was discovering things that I don't even, I didn't even know about. But Caroline Polachek has been a producer and a practicing artist since effectively 2007, 2008. There's so many different collabs. There's this piece of work called Gloss Coma, which is so fascinating because you know, I assume this is strategic, but some of these works do not automatically appear under her discography. Check it again, check out this playlist. It lists everything in chronological order, which is really gratifying as someone who makes music to see like, oh, this was where she was at here and this is where this happened. And oh, it's just so inspiring to see someone with that level of tenacity outside of the side projects and there are so many after chairlift had disbanded we see the dawn of ramona lisa which was a very i think it's described as a pastoral record um with visuals being as heavy-handed as the audio which makes a lot of sense when you look at um, the very distinct double eye persona. This album is unique in that it was recorded entirely on a laptop. That means no external microphone. That means singing on top of the laptop. It's just one of the many examples of Caroline's pursuit of creating within constraints, which is very beautiful. And then we have CEP, which is more of a, I feel like I'm going to mischaracterize it but it's a project that's comprised entirely of sine waves shaped in different waves meant to relax and during this era Caroline talked a lot about the work being useful as in art having more of a utility rather than necessarily a feeling in the same way that you might listen to white noise or maybe like an ambient 
soundtrack to calm you down. I think for me, this project has a similar effect. You know, I was in my 30s, first of all, starting out on a new project as a woman in the pop industry felt yeah. kind of unprecedented, um, or at least, you know, in terms of it being successful. And I also wanted to do something that was so completely unlike Chairlift that I thought that my pre-existing audience wouldn't ride with me. But yes, can you imagine 17 plus years of continuous public releases? And I think for many people who are just getting introduced to her, um, but what a treat that so many of these projects are still available to us. I think it takes a lot of bravery to keep up your past work because <laughs> you likely have different standards and new skills. I know I cringe at a lot of the old stuff I've made. You revisited them or was there any part of you who were like, oh, these are pretty good? No, or or absolutely not. Okay, right. <laughs> you never know the beginner's mind and the, the of purity course. of expression. Though I do think in the long run, prioritizing growth over perfection is very important. But I'm struck by just how many different lanes she chose to go in, right? We have a duo. We have the solo project. We have more of an ambient project with different intentions. Just a pattern of continuing to resist the boxes that the music industry inevitably tries to package you in is nothing short of impressive. Also, can we talk about how Miss wrote an aria? <laughs> this isn't something she just picked up, right? The aria came out in 2022, but I found a video of her performing opera in a C-note. In a C-note? I feel like I'm going to pronounce that wrong. In Fancy Cave in Tulum. In 2010. <laughs> like, who? Who was doing that? And there's so much more music that comes under her production. This woman is a music production powerhouse, which is so inspiring. Okay? Just listen to some of the people she has worked with. We've got Beyonce. We've got Charlie XCX, Felicita, Fisher Spoons, Blood Orange, Empress of... Superfruit and Pentatonix, Hyde, Shy Girl, Flume, A.G. Cook, cross genre, cross levels of artistic notoriety. Having that flexibility really proves how much of an incredible engineer she is. Although she did not win, it's so awesome as a lady producer to see another lady producer get a Grammy non- uh, bah, 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 get a Grammy nomination for her engineering because unfortunately that is so so rare. The imprint that she releases music under is called Perpetual Novice which to me implies curiosity, the spirit of constantly learning which she obviously embodies. Her persistence of just keeping going like irrespective of how many people know her the fact that she's been releasing for 17 plus years is quite an accomplishment, right? Like so many of us get fed up after a couple of years and just stop. But her passion and her persistence carry her through. I also love that to this day, she is as much of a champion of small artists. She is just as much of a fan and a curator as she is a creator. Today, or on the day of making this, shouted out an artist on her uh, story that has less than 10,000 monthly listeners. Her If You Please playlist which she periodically curates frequently has artists that have relatively small listener counts there is no reason for her to do that other than the pure love of music and uplifting her community and i love that despite these new levels of success she continues to curate and also continue to reinvent herself you know, once you're at a level where something works, it feels like you have much more to lose. And so ironically, it's much more difficult to push yourself to do something new or not care as much about what the world around you is thinking because not caring is ideally what got you there in the first place. And something that really translated this to me was the Late Show performance where 
Polacek is <laughs> giving a slideshow presentation. It's just such a cool piece of performance art. And just like using the format of The Late Show um, in a, an incredibly new way. I've, I had never seen something like that before, period. In one of her interviews, she expressed the desire to reach past the expression of cool and totally rejects thinking about genre when creating her music, which makes a lot of sense if you've listened to any of her music. But we had to remember that it wasn't always easy, right? Especially while embarking on a solo career. As Polacek says, before releasing her first solo album under her own name, Pang, she was dropped by her label five weeks before the project was dropped. And in retrospect, Caroline refers to this being a very nice blessing in disguise, but I cannot imagine <laughs> the level of uh, fear and instability that might cause when you're just embarking out on your own under a solo project that's attached to your name and not a moniker. As Polacek says, I wouldn't be the artist I am without my autonomy. I've never had a suggestion box and I never will. In another interview, she says in response to, do you ever see Caroline Polacek as a persona? No, maybe that's the problem. It's hard not to be influenced or pushed into being influenced by the world around you, especially with public metrics and that sort of thing. But the reason why we love Caroline Polachek's music is because she resists it fervently. I also love that she finds beauty in limitations. You know, how many times as artists do we put off creating something because we don't have the perfect piece of gear or it's not the right time or we haven't made it perfect or we don't have the right marketing tools or whatever. Caroline Polachek is a story of hope in so many different formats. She continued to persist and reinvent her artistry to keep her creative self alive and excited. And how inspiring is that to see? As said by Polacek, when we started the paying cycle, I could barely afford a little backdrop that was half the size of this wall behind me. Now I can build a landscape on stage and really brings my ideas to life with music videos. Thinking about that makes me really emotional because it's something I've wanted my entire career and now I've had it. So even though from my eyes and I'm sure so many others, Caroline's music has always had a very immersive quality. She is just now, after 17 years, 17 plus years of consistently making art, <laughs> getting to execute it to her full vision. Just let that sink in. She didn't wait for the right time. She created the platform for that time to exist. And that is a story of hope. I'll close it out with this. It's exciting and fulfilling to have cultivated a fan base that is very imaginative, creative, and open-minded. In that sense, I feel like this is where I've wanted to be my entire life and my entire career, to feel understood by a really creative group of dreamers. Caroline Polacek is successful despite all of these random boxes and stereotypes that she's defying because she measures her success not by numbers, not by random voices <laughs> on the internet, but by what her art and work can inspire. And I think that's a lesson for us all. Woo! Anyway, yeah, I, I think Caroline Polachek is fantastic. <laughs> and I'm sure if you're watching this video, you do too. So would love to hear what your favorite track by her is. Um, so hard to pick, but I my top song last year was Pretty Impossible. Um, so... But Welcome to My Island also, wow, I mean that bridge, come on, it's so hard to choose. But yeah, would love to hear your thoughts. And yeah, thanks so much for watching. I will see you later. And yeah, bye.